While many groups and governments wish to censor the internet, Israel and its partisans are among the most globally significant. They work to promote the Israel narrative while blocking facts about Palestine, the Israel lobby, and other subjects they wish to cover up. Much of this is done by devoted individuals acting independently, voluntarily, and relentlessly. But many of these activists are part of orchestrated, well-funded projects sponsored by the Israeli government and other pro-Israel groups. They utilize Israeli soldiers, students, American teens and seniors, and range from infiltrating Wikipedia to influencing YouTube. As we'll see, some even operate out of Jewish community centers in the US. One such group is the Israeli military's New Media Desk. It is well known nowadays that what happens on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube has great influence on events as they occur on the ground. The internet too is a battleground. It is thus comforting to learn that the IDF employs soldiers who tweet, share, like, and more. Another project initiated in 2011 by the National Union of Israeli Students has the stated goal to deepen and expand Hasbara, or state propaganda activities of students in the state of Israel. Under this program, Israeli students are paid to, quote, lead the battle against hostile websites. The students are tasked with what many would call shilling or trolling in online forums and social media. They're directed to create original content in the form of news reports and blogs, edit Wikipedia, inject pro-Israel messages into discussions on social media, as well as to report and remove what they consider to be allegedly anti-Semitic content. It's important to note that criticism of Israel is not the same thing as anti-Semitism, despite Israel's best efforts to redefine the word. Anti-Zionism is the new anti-Semitism. Anti-Zionism is anti-history, anti-humanity, and anti-Semitic. It's pure anti-Semitism. Let's use our power on social media to educate our society. Now, interestingly, this charity, the International Holocaust Remembrance Association, has also given a number of examples of what sort of behaviour should be called out alongside this, which are actions which seek to stereotype Jewish people, to justify attacking or killing them, claiming that the state of Israel is a racist endeavour or comparing it to Nazi Germany. When there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government. Um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. Now, I know what they do because I used to ask them to do it. I mean, when I was in the Mossad and we had a guy that gave us problems in the U.S. and he was speaking out and he was talking like, like Pete talked once and said, Israel is bombing Lebanon with cluster bombs. We say, hey, who's that guy? You know? And of course the campaign starts and before you know it, the guy's leaving. And he's an anti-Semite because that's what we say he is. Another pro-Israel organization that targets public information on the internet is CAMERA, the Committee for Accuracy in Middle East Reporting in America. A 2008 expose revealed a CAMERA initiative to infiltrate Wikipedia in order to rewrite Palestinian history, pass off crude propaganda as fact, and take over Wikipedia administrative structures to ensure these changes go either undetected or unchallenged. Leaked emails from CAMERA called for volunteers to secretly work on editing Wikipedia entries. They were instructed to, quote, avoid for obvious reasons picking a username that marks you as pro-Israel or that lets people know your real name. The emails emphasized that volunteers were to avoid editing Israel-related articles for a short period of time after signing up as editors to avoid arousing suspicion and to always log in because if you make changes while not logged in, Wikipedia will record your computer's IP address. In 2010, two Israeli groups began offering community workshops on Zionist editing of Wikipedia entries with the aim of making sure that information in the online encyclopedia reflects the worldview of Zionist groups. Moetzet Yesh, in conjunction with My Israel, uh, has arranged an instruction day for wiki editors. The goal of the day is to um, teach people how to edit in Wikipedia, which is the number one source of information today in the world. As a way of example, if someone searches the Gaza flotilla, we want to be there. We want to be the guys who influence what is written there, how it's written, and to ensure that it's balanced and uh, Zionist in nature. 
And again in 2013, there was evidence of pro-Israel tampering with Wikipedia when an employee of an Israeli institute called NGO Monitor edited articles about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in an allegedly biased manner. According to the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, Dreiman concealed the facts that he was an employee of NGO Monitor and that he was using a second username which is forbidden under Wikipedia's rules. In 2017, yet another Israeli project was launched with the intention of controlling discourse and promoting a pro-Israel narrative online. Known as ACT-IL, the project uses a software application that leverages the power of communities to support Israel through organized online activity. The software is a joint venture of Israel's IDC University, the Israeli American Council, and another American group called the Maccabee Task Force, which was created to combat the international boycott of Israel over its human rights abuses, which it terms an anti-Semitic movement. The project is also supported by Israel's Strategic Affairs Ministry and Israel's intelligence community. Its CEO is an eight-year veteran of Israeli army intelligence named Yardin Ben Yosef. Israeli media Ynet News reports that the Israeli military has begun scouring Jewish communities abroad for young computer prodigies to recruit for its ranks. In operations Pillar of Defense and Protective Edge, we set up the first advocacy situation rooms here at IDC. We operated together with hundreds of volunteers who work around the clock for Israel on social media networks. Through the operations, we realized that when many people work together, it is effective. This understanding led IAC and IDC to partner and found ACTAEL, the online community for Israel. Jewish news site The Forward calls ACT-IL a new entry into the online propaganda war that has thousands of mostly U.S.-based volunteers who can be directed from Israel into a social media swarm. Its work so far offers a startling glimpse of how it could shape the online conversations about Israel without ever showing its hand. The Forward article reports that the project recruits Jewish teens and adults and sometimes operates out of local Jewish community centers. They are referred to as media rooms, and there are at least five of them planned or active in the United States, including one in Boston, two in New Jersey, and one opening soon in New York. After being given ACT-IL advocacy training, the volunteers are instructed to complete missions, which are assigned from a headquarters in Herzliya, Israel. The Forward reports that in November, the Boston Media Room created a mission for the app that asked users to email a Boston area church to complain about a screening there of a documentary that is critical of Israel. The proposed text of the email likened the screening of the film to a white supremacist riot. In reality, the film, Occupation of the American Mind, investigates Israel's PR war in the US and was promoted by respected American progressives, including Democracy Now!'s Amy Goodman. We hear over and over again that the conflict comes down to Palestinian terrorism and Israeli security. If rockets fly on your head, you're allowed to defend yourself. And what gets pushed out of the frame entirely is the fact now that for almost 50 years, Palestinians have been systematically dispossessed from their land and denied their most basic human rights. They have been able to effectively defend the indefensible to the American public. The Israeli government is involved in numerous internet projects. Director General of Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs, Sima Vaknin Gil, told a forum of Israeli tech developers to flood the internet with pro-Israel propaganda. When she was Israel's chief censor, she said, We censor information that is critical to our enemies, who have no capabilities like us, do not have a Jewish brain, and therefore our enemy relies to a large extent on open information. Her ministry has a budget of roughly $70 million to fight what it calls a war on consciousness terrorism. To win it, she said, Israel must use tricks and craftiness. Another Israeli entity that plays a role in covert internet activity is the Israeli military's legendary high-tech spy branch, Unit 8200. This unit is composed of thousands of cyber warriors, primarily 18 to 21 years of age, some even younger. An article in the Jewish press reports that Unit 8200 has developed a great reputation for effectiveness in intelligence gathering, including operating a massive global spy network. Numerous Israeli tech companies, many of them headed by former military intelligence officers, assist in these online spying efforts, sometimes receiving Israeli government funding for digital initiatives aimed at gathering intelligence on activist groups and countering their efforts.
To be clear, this is all part of an effort by an occupying government and its military working covertly to achieve censorship of reporting on its atrocities. Major internet companies have reportedly been cooperating with Israel. In 2015, Israel's deputy foreign minister visited Silicon Valley and met with YouTube's CEO and Google's director of public policy. Afterwards, Israeli media reported that it was agreed that the companies would strengthen ties with the foreign ministry and build a regular mechanism of control to prevent the distribution of these incendiary materials on the network. Google is not the only tech company with close ties to Israel. For example, Facebook's head of policy in Israel, Jordana Cutler, had previously been employed for many years by the Israeli government. In 2016, Fortune magazine reported that Facebook, Google, and YouTube are complying with up to 95% of Israeli requests to delete content that the government says incites Palestinian violence. Among other things, Google said it would increase the number of members of its Trusted Flagger program, which enables certain organizations and government agencies to report content. It also said it would increase support for NGOs and organizations working to present a corrective voice. One such trusted flagger is the Anti-Defamation League, commonly known as the ADL, whose mission includes standing up for Israel. The ADL considers criticism of Israel to be anti-Semitism. The ADL has created something it calls the Online Hate Index, aimed at recognizing what it considers hate speech and targeting it for censorship. By combining artificial intelligence and machine learning with social science, the Online Hate Index will ultimately uncover and identify trends and patterns in hate speech across different platforms. A leaked secret January 2017 ADL strategy paper detailed how to counter the pro-Palestine movement. Among its many strategies were some focused on the importance of efforts in cyberspace. The paper called for a mix of policy advocacy and industry engagement with corporations such as Google, Facebook, and Twitter in a manner consistent with the ADL Center for Technology and Society and its Anti-Cyber-Hate Working Group. The detailed 32-page document reported that in recent years, a massive investment of resources and talent had been directed against the pro-Palestine movement. One of the results, the paper said, was to create a worldwide pro-Israel network. It was this network that the report sought to mobilize. On March 13th, at the 2018 South by Southwest Music Festival, YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki revealed that the company has just hired an additional 10,000 people to help review content flagged for removal. She also talked about a new feature that will soon be added to the platform. When there are videos that have that are, that are focused around something that's a conspiracy, um, and we're using a list of well-known internet conspiracies from Wikipedia that we will show as a companion unit next to the mm -hmm. video information from Wikipedia showing that uh, here is information from Wikipedia about this event. So YouTube will be sending people to text. We will be providing a companion union of text. Considering what we now know about the efforts of the Israeli government and pro-Israel organizations to edit Wikipedia and essentially rewrite history in their favor, can we expect this kind of companion unit to show up next to our videos? Will our channel be taken down again like it was recently for five days? Only time will tell. With so many people working to keep this kind of information from getting out, we never know when we'll be censored again. If you'd like to be notified when we publish new content, please sign up for our mailing list and subscribe to us on BitChute, DTube, or any of the other platforms listed in the description below. And if you find our videos and articles informative, please consider making a donation to help us continue this important work.